Okay, um, now this video is just about how to, in my very basic understanding, decrease the size of a movie using QuickTime to export it. Uh, because a lot of people have trouble um, with their video uh, being too large for the net. So they get a raw video out. So this is the, the raw video out that I've produced, okay, with me chatting away. It's, I'll show you what it's like to start with. Okay, now we'll press the beginning. Okay, so I'm making this movie to see if I can make it smaller once I've made it. So I'm trying to make it as big as I can. Okay, so that's not too bad. Um, now, what I've done here is I've shown you here the different sizes. So the original size is is uh, 25 megabytes and then I knocked it down to 16.9 then down to 11 and you could actually squeeze it lower than that too if you change the size of it but from 25 to 11 is quite a sizable uh, quite a sizable reduction and there's not a lot of difference except that in this one the sound isn't it isn't as good but you may not be able to detect that so easily so I'll give you an example of the um, the 16 one, which is still quite a reasonable reduction. So that's test 3. What have I done with that? Uh, test 3, here we are. Okay, what I'm going to do is try and play them side by side. They'll be a little bit out of sync, but um, here we go. Okay, so I'm okay. making this movie to see if I can make it smaller once I've made it. Uh -huh. So I'm trying to make it as big as I can I've this movie in to terms see of size. I can I've got too much frame <laughs> smaller once I've made it. But so you I'm can see to make it as big as I can in that that's not bad that quality. That's the idea. Um, so it doesn't make much in difference terms in terms of quality so and it's exactly the same size. So um, so that's it hasn't really it's almost indistinguishable from the other one. Okay, and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, for the really small one, test two, the sound gets a bit iffy. Okay, so I'm making this movie to see if I can make it smaller once I've made it. So I'm trying to make it as big. Now, one thing you got, you can hear that it's a bit fuzzy on the sound, so you'd muck around with it. A lot of this is just trial and error, right? A lot of it is, is to take a movie do what I'm doing with this and you'll find uh, that it um, uh, you'll find the right the right, right one for you okay so there's the first one I'm starting with an mp4 an, MV, uh, an mp4 um, file um, with an, which has a a, pre, a, um, uh, a tag on the end of it of m4v m4a is audio m4v is for video now you may, I actually don't know whether QuickTime, standard QuickTime 7 allows you to export like this. I think it does, but I can't tell without uninstalling QuickTime, putting the old one back on again. Honestly, I can't be stuffed doing it. So um, if you've just got straight QuickTime, not QuickTime Pro, give it a go and see what comes out. See if you've got that there or it's greyed out. If you haven't got it and you, d you are using video a bit, uh, QuickTime Pro is really worthwhile getting. It's like 20 bucks or less, um, and uh, it's it's uh, really good because it gives you the ability to export in all sorts of different formats and to play all sorts of different things. So um, I would say it's a winner. Okay, so the first thing you do is go to export. Um, which is here on the file menu to export and export gives you uh, then a, a box um, obviously you don't want to write over your original movie so make that something like well I'm going to go to four because I'm up to four I go sort of four five six and I produce say through you know five or six different ones and have a look at them and then I make a judgment as to which one's best quality for for size okay I'm going to export it to QuickTime Movie, but you will notice that there are another other types of um, 
export if you're going to play it on an Apple TV for instance or on an iPhone there's all those opportunities there but uh, I'm just going straight to um, to QuickTime Movie if you start with a QuickTime Movie it, uh, you might want to change it from QuickTime to MPEG4 uh, which is that one there so anyway we're going to do that right each one gives much the same uh, things now there's a, a basic one that you can choose here which is you can choose to say export it to dial up where you're just playing audio dial up with video broadband at low speed broadband at high at med medium and high speed uh, LAN is local area network or intranet which is one within a business say that you're not actually going up onto the internet with you're just going between machines e ethernet or or airport type machines um, and uh, finally you've got streaming uh, medium or low streaming is is where the server that you're uploading it to has the ability to stream video live off the server and I have a feeling but I don't quote me on this but I have a feeling that uh, the dot Mac server does that uh, but anyway I don't know I certainly put uh, certainly compressed movies and streaming and put it up there and it's worked whether that means it's got a streaming server or not, I don't know. That's for the more intelligent among the community to inform you about that. I don't know anything about it. Okay, so do that. Where am I going to save it to? The, I save it to the desktop because that's my primary workspace. And then always file things away after you've done that. You've used them or get rid of them. Uh, so okay now I'm not it says most recent settings so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the options and show you what these settings might be and you will get different ones but they do much the same so first one is settings and what you'll find there is the compression type now there are heaps of different compression types and if you don't know what you're doing uh, don't use them um, the standard now is H.264, which has recently come out with the update to um, to uh, QuickTime. H.264, which is a very good compression type. The frame rate uh, is how many frames per second. See, it's FPS. How many frames per second you will see. Now, generally speaking, the eye has trouble discerning much difference after 24 frames a second. It's uh, 24 frames a second is very smooth motion, uh, except if you've got something that's happening incredibly fast. If you're doing a sporting event or something like that, you might want to up the frame rate. But um, uh, or if you are planning on doing something like slowing it down, um, uh, in fact, that's what slow motion is. You actually shoot at a high frame rate and then slow the film down so that you can see it. And it gives you much better quality but for for the purposes of this because all I am is a talking head in this and the background never moves right um, I'm gonna uh, stick to probably 15 uh, well I'll try it at 15 see what it looks like okay now keyframing is an interesting thing what a keyframe does is that um, the way you digitize a movie is that that not every frame is rendered in other words not every frame is taken a picture of you don't need to take a picture of every single frame if I put the keyframing at um, every uh, say 30 frames right and if I put it to 30 frames that would mean every two seconds one frame would be rendered because it's 15 frames a second so at the end of thir the 30th frame on every shot would be um, would be fully rendered. In other words, it would look for it would take a complete picture of it. Then what it does is frame 31 simply looks for the differences between frame 30, which is fully rendered, and 31. So if not if there isn't much movement, it only records the bit of movement. Um, the problem you get is if you've got a background that moves a lot uh, or like if you've got a I'll give you an example if, if for instance behind me was a, a swaying tree uh